People in Russia are literally facing years of jail time right now for sharing and even liking memes on social media. Have you ever shared or simply liked an emotionally charged political meme on Facebook because you thought it was funny or maybe relevant? Maria Motuznaya and Daniel Markin, two teenagers in Russia, are facing up to five years in prison because they shared memes online. They were arrested on charges of inciting extremism and insulting religious sensitivities. You can even be charged with intent simply by storing the content in your computer without having shared it with anyone yet. The memes featured nuns smoking with the caption, quickly, while God isn't looking, while another one shows Jon Snow from HBO's Game of Thrones with the caption, Jon Snow is risen, truly he is risen. But to understand why two teenagers sharing memes online is considered inciting extremism and insulting religious sensitivities, we have to back up and first examine Russia's extremism laws. In 2002, Russia's Duma, which is the equivalent to the United States House of Representatives, passed anti-extremism laws, or the Federal Law on Combating Extremist Activity, in response to terrorism in the North Caucasus. The purpose of the laws initially was to stop any religious groups from claiming they were better than any others. But the laws have since snowballed into broad vagueness. In 2014, after language was added to the law to include internet activity, the Duma's jurisdiction expanded into the blogosphere and any social media site where extremists could be sharing or even liking memes or other content that the Duma just considers to be extremist. So yes, you can be arrested for just clicking like on something that the Duma thinks goes too far. And as the years went on, the language of the laws kept expanding, which eventually led to more arrests, giving authorities more power to conduct intrusive surveillance. The laws also required IT companies to store the content of users' online communications, like text messages, photos, and videos, for six months, and the metadata for three years. The maximum punishment for sharing or liking content, like a photo depicting Jon Snow as Jesus, is five years in jail. Even just the opening of one such criminal case can land you on an extremist list monitored by the Federal Financial Monitoring Service. People on this list are restricted from certain professions and their bank accounts can be frozen, even if they haven't been convicted in the past year, 604 people have been arrested, most of whom are under the age of 25. In Russia today, it is illegal through these laws to express feelings of political opposition online without possibly facing serious consequences. And the Russian government, believe it or not, is getting even more draconian with extremist arrests, which brings us to the new greatness case. 10 protesters have been detained since March in a Moscow jail for using social media to organize what the government has called an extremist community. This opposition movement was hatched on the app Telegram, which is Russia's equivalent of Facebook Messenger. Two best friends, Anna Pavlikova, 17, and Maria Dubovic, 19, started venting about the things that young people in Russia talk about. Life, politics, school, the Putin regime. They discussed these things in a small group chat on Telegram called New Chat. Members of the group chat included mostly unemployed men in their 20s and early 30s. But unbeknownst to the members of the group, a man who introduced himself as Ruslan D was monitoring the whole thing before being formally invited to join the group. Within months of Ruslan's arrival to the group chat, what was mostly talk about everyday life quickly turned into a chat about extremism and organizing a political revolution. And before long, Ruslan had pushed the group beyond just talking. He organized meetings and fully funded the operation. And before he joined the group, there was no indication that they ever had any intention to meet in person. But Ruslan changed all of that. He persuaded the teens to start an actual opposition group. The members settled on calling it the New Greatness and even came up with a logo. According to members of the organization, Ruslan is the one who authored the manifesto that called for Putin to face a court of justice for his actions. Ruslan was also the one who divvied up the group into separate departments, which in turn would qualify them as extremists under Russian law. And when the group became a little intense, leaving certain members to feel like they wanted out, Ruslan was the one who encouraged them to stay. All 10 members of this so-called group 
were arrested. Four were placed under house arrest, and six, including Anna and Maria, were taken into police custody. The only member that remained free was Ruslan D. When he was questioned as a witness during the trial, he said he came across the group chat when he was admittedly lurking online, looking for government critics. But when the group's defense attorneys read the transcript from Ruslan's testimony, it was obvious that something was fishy. Normally, the witness includes identifying details, such as an address, a birth date, a phone number, a job, but all of that information was missing. The only thing that they uncovered was his real name, Alexander Konstantinov. Because he didn't provide any identifying details, defense attorneys believe that Alexander Konstantinov is a made-up name in order to cover for the real Alexander, who is an undercover FSB agent cracking down on political opposition. Members of the New Greatness face up to 10 years in prison on these extremism charges. After hearing both sides of the story, thousands of Russians took to the streets of central Moscow in protest of the arrests. And as a result of the protest, the next day, the court transferred Anna Pavlikova and Maria Dubovik to house arrest until September 13th. Pavlikova has asked that all charges against her be dropped because they're based on hearsay provided by Ruslan D, the alleged undercover FSB agent. She plans on suing him. Because 99% of all cases in Russia end in a conviction, Pavlikova's parents are losing hope. Russia's extremism laws have gone from attacking free speech to entrapping teenagers who are simply expressing dismay over the direction of Russian politics. The precedent that this sets for the future of Russian life is pretty terrifying. But many Russians have already acknowledged the absurdities of the laws. Social media companies, politicians, and human rights activists have had enough. Mail.ru, the parent company of VK, which is Russia's Facebook, is asking the government to change legislation on social media hate speech and pardon those who have been unjustly convicted. And VK itself has recently promised to introduce new privacy settings, which will make it harder for law enforcement to monitor users' accounts. Three members of the Human Rights Council under the Russian president are also trying to combat this. They presented proposals to be approved in September. They denounced conflicts of interest within the FSB and asked to replace jail time with fines and supervision instead. Russians are clearly waking up to the laws, and there are a lot of debates surrounding them today. The Kremlin's effort to mute views that may be politically different are actually backfiring because Russian citizens are fighting back. Hey guys, it's Versha. Please subscribe to Now This World for more from the Russia Desk and let us know in the comments what you want us to cover. And maybe give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Thank you for watching.